You're watching BTB TV. All right, guys, what's going on? And welcome back to the show. What's good? Now, this week, we've already looked at a lot of different topics here on the show. We've looked at equipment, uh, we've talked to different coaches, but this week we are talking about bike fitting. Now, if it's not the most forgotten about element of you know, gaining performance, it's certainly one of the most forgotten about pieces. I mean, everyone's willing to spend a ton of money on new wheels and a ton of money on coaches and nutrition, but when it comes down to it, the foundation of how you're gonna perform on your bike, on the course, again, we're talking cyclocross specifically, it really comes down to not just being on a bike that fits, but ultimately getting the best possible fit for your performance to optimize your output on that ride. So that means seat height, that means stem length, it means all those little nitty gritty tiny little elements. So this week we're going to be talking to the experts behind this machine behind me, the new Guru Fit Systems machine. It's incredible, it does some really cool things. We are here right now in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the brand new Cannondale Sports Bike Shop. This place is awesome. Let's take it upstairs and let's get this thing going. Hey guys, my name is Colby Marple, Marketing Manager at Guru, and this is the brand new Guru Fit System. So the foundation of the Guru Fit System is our dynamic fit unit, which is right in front of me here. What makes it unique relative to other fit bikes is this is the only one that is 100% motorized. What that means for the customer is when they're on the bike, you can feel changes in real time while you're pedaling. So no more stop and start, off the bike, on the bike, you feel all the changes down to a millimeter as you pedal. For the fitter, you're able to move with incredible precision, save time, and provide your customers with the best possible fit. What we've added to this latest version is an incline and decline function. So now you can test a position not only level as it is right now, but you can pivot the fit bike up and downhill to confirm that a position uh, will not only be comfortable, but also efficient when you are ascending and descending. Apart from the fit bike, we've completely modified the software. It's a brand new version. We now have a bike finder fit, which allows you to start a fit from the parameters of any bike you can think of. So road race bike, mountain bike, recreation, triathlon, and of course, cycle cross, which is what we're gonna do today. Our optimization fit module is designed to give you the ultimate in performance. So we're gonna do a deep dive into your personal fit. We're gonna go through many trials to identify the best possible fit to not only maximize comfort, but your pedaling performance and ensure that whatever bike you're on, you get the most out of it. Another thing we've added to the new FIT system is a brand new 3D camera system. It enables two of our core technologies, one of which is rider scan, one of which is seamless motion capture analysis. To start with rider scan, this is how every Guru FIT begins. You simply stand in front of the camera, a virtual skeleton is drawn on the rider, identifies all contact points, so five seconds later you have height, inseam shoulder width, everything you used to have to do by hand is now captured seamlessly by the camera. So what you guys are going to see today is our optimization fit for a cyclocross bike. You'll see the fit system completely in action, trying different saddle heights, bar and stem configurations to ensure that come race day you're in the best possible position. You're watching BTB TV. So first step of any Guru Fit session is our rider scan. So this is where we utilize our new 3D camera system to capture the athlete's anatomic data to drive a fit. So we're gonna get height, inseam, shoulder width just by clicking a mouse. So, yep, stand just like that, face forward, and hold still. So as you can see now, everything we used to have to do by hand in the way of using a tape measure, or conventional uh, inseam tool, all seamlessly captured here in the software. So this is our product selection screen. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a cycle cross fit. So here's where we pick our saddles. We've got everything preloaded in here. Today we'll be running the Physique Antares. And based on the rider scan, we know exactly what bar width to run. In this case, we're gonna run the SL80 in a 44. And then we've also got adjustable crank length as well. Based on Colt's inseam, we're gonna run a 175 crank. And now we've got everything we need to move the fit bike to our starting point. All right, Colt, go ahead and hop on. Should I cyclocross remount? <laughs> no, that's not part of the fit. Hey man, we're all about dominant performance race day, so absolutely. Whoa. 
All right, so the first thing we're going to do is adjust saddle height. So you'll notice he's a little low right now. That's by design. We want to start low and basically take you up the ladder to identify your maximum and then fine tune from there. So first thing we're going to do is move you up a little bit. Is that better or worse? Better. Better? <laughs> All right, let's try it one more time. Better or worse? Better. Okay, let's keep going. Keep it coming. How about now? Feeling a little tall? Feels just about right. Just about right? All right, let's try one more move just to see it. Yeah, now, okay, now worse. Yeah. Now, a cool thing about the system is it elicits feedback from the rider. Because I'm doing all these things while Colt's pedaling, he can feel it for himself, but also, too, as the fitter, I can see in real time what's happening. As we make these changes, apart from cues that I'm taking from Colt, now when I move back down, see how your pedal stroke's that much freer? Yeah. That's the real beauty of this system. Yeah, my hips stopped rocking. Exactly right. Now what we're going to do, just as an exercise is, we're going to try to move in a smaller increment to dial it in a little more. So now we're going to take you five mils down. So pedal there for a bit. And now we'll take you up to what you liked before. Feel any difference there? Yep. So let's try the move down again. Do you prefer the lower position or slightly higher? Slightly higher. Slightly higher? Okay. So that's step one. We've now established saddle height. That's the first step in our fit recipe. That took like 30 seconds. It's pretty quick. <laughs> that's, the, that's the idea. Um, you're getting everything done the way you always used to, but in much less time than was required previously, and you can feel it straight away, which is awesome. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at your reach. So, for lack of a better term, we're going to be swapping stems, but I'm just clicking buttons instead of uh, having to break out a wrench. So, go ahead and put your hands out in the hoods for me. So, we're starting you relatively relaxed, and that's by design. Just the same way that we started saddle height a little low, we want to start you in a relaxed position, attempt to move you out to your maximum, and then fine tune from there. So, let's try to take you out 10 millimeters. How's that feel? Long. Feels long. Okay. So right there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, again, th this is setting up shallow according to his proportions, but what's yeah. great about the system is we can optimize it based on what the athlete's telling us. So if it already feels that long, I'm going to shorten this way up, and then we're going to try to basically get him as efficient and as aggressive as we can possibly get while still maintaining a degree of comfort. So sure. moving you way in right now, this is kind of like an old man fit. Yeah. Oh, uh, it feels good. <laughs> there you go. Old Manny. Yeah. So what I'm going to do as well is, um, because we raised your saddle height, the front end is now a little bit low. So we're going to bring the front end up to level you out a little bit. We're going to do drop in the end, but yeah. this will allow you to make a better assessment of your reach. So even more of an old man fit now. Sure. Um, and so does it matter at all? Like, I know a lot of riders for cross, uh, myself included, I'll run my hoods a little more rolled up than on my road bike. Does that matter much in the... Sure. Back so the, the great thing about the system is, for one, we have a dedicated cycle cross fit module, which is only one of its kind in the yeah. industry. And along those lines, we can make the, call it cycle cross specific adjustments in a fit. Now, if you were just starting out, we would set your saddle level, which is how it is right now, and we would also set the bars in as neutral a position as possible. Now, for you as a seasoned cross rider, as you said, you like to run your hoods a little higher. Um, we can make that tilt adjustment on the fit bike both when you start and we can make an adjustment mid-fit and you can see what those changes are like. That's all a part of the program. Cool. So now let's try to uh, dial in your reach a little bit. Yeah. How's that feel? Comfortable. Cool. All right, let's try one more move. How about now? Yeah. Feeling good? All right, let's Feels try good. one more move, see if we can get you a little more pro. And now this too is where, you know, move around a little bit, test the drops, test the flats. I mean, obviously in a cross race, you're moving around a lot. Can you get out of the saddle on this thing? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Feeling pretty good there? Yeah. Okay. So let's keep the reach there. Now let's uh, try to take some spacers out, if you will. So now we're going to drop you down. Slam uh, the stem. Yeah, there you go. How's that feel? Better. Better? All right, let's try it again. How about now? Better. Better? All right, let's keep going. That's the idea behind starting high is we want yeah. to bring you down into a lower position where you got a little more weight over the front end, but still um, keeping you comfortable and relaxed as well. Hi, I'm Gabby Darren, and welcome back to BTV TV. So what we've done now is 
we've taken you through the full recipe. We've got your saddle height dialed, we've made some reach adjustments, and we've also lowered your drop. We basically started you level, now you're running roughly a 50 millimeter drop, which is, you know, slightly on the end of aggressive. I mean, obviously pros will run it way more than 50 mils, but yeah. what we're gonna do next is, we're actually gonna take this position and rotate you ahead of the bottom bracket. So, the idea is, you know, when you come out to the hoods, you got a pretty, you know, race ready position. However, as we rotate forward, the front end weight's gonna be even more pronounced. We wanna bring you forward to get you more aggressive, get you more efficient over the front end. So this is the first time where we're gonna save a position. We can always come back to it and test it later. Sure. But we'll save this one and uh, we'll make an assessment once we do effective seat tube angle. So one of the cool things about this fit system is, in addition to making individual changes to saddle height, reach and drop, we can actually manipulate an entirely different effective seat tube angle. So, instead of making one adjustment to just saddle or just bar, we're gonna take Colt's position as it stands right now and rotate you a full half degree further ahead of the BB than you are now. So, we'll make that adjustment now. So you feel everything just move? Yeah. So it wasn't just one thing. Um, and this is all designed to start you in a slightly slacker position to get you in a range, but what we want to ultimately do is bring you a little further forward to get you a little more aggressive um, and a little more ready for racing. So go ahead and put your hands out in the hoods. Um, now that we've made that adjustment, what we're going to do now is go through the same process that we did before where we're going to start with saddle height and then go through the same uh, set of steps that we did before. So saddle height, how's it feeling? Good. Good? Okay. So now that we have rotated you further forward, you may feel like you have slightly more weight over the front end. Do you feel any strain in your hands, elbows? None. No? Okay. So you may notice that, again, in this case, we just ran through the whole recipe. You didn't want to make any changes. That's perfectly okay. Yeah. Uh, the idea here is because we've made this rotation, we have made adjustments. Right. They're fine um, and they're detailed, but if it feels good, we can save this here. Now, what we'll do next is make one more rotation. This is where you should start to feel um, a little pressure over the front. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's like it's a little downhill. Yeah, no, exactly right. So, now, compared to this previous position, you feel better in the previous one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this is all part of the process. Um, we can make trial and error uh, happen in a beneficial way. We can try as many different positions as you want, we can toggle back and forth, um, and ultimately you're going to tell me when you got way too much pressure over the front end. That's the beauty of the system is we can get all that done um, very, very quickly. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to be a little mean and I'm going to crank the resistance up. Now, sure. the reason why we're doing this is we had you at roughly 100 watts before. We, we 300, he said. <laughs> We want you pedaling under load, but we don't want yeah. you to be killing yourself. However, a big part of this process is we want to get you comfortable, but we also want to get you efficient as well. Yeah. So now we've got you at 200, okay. and we're going to go back and forth between the first safe position and the position that you're in now. So we'll go back to number one, and this is where we want you, you know, to spend some time in this position, pedal through it, um, you know, move hand position, see how it feels. And what we'll do is we'll go back and forth between this trial and the previous trial. So now that you've been in number one, let's take you to number two. Go ahead and try the hoods, the drops as well. Any initial feedback from when we went to, uh, to this position? You want to try it again? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So here's number one. Okay. And now here's number two. Yeah, it's slight. Number two a little better. Feeling two? Okay. And that's basically... Number one is just a little more, almost a little more rolled back, a little upright. Sure. And that's uh, the benefit of the system is we can save as many different positions as you want. I'm going to take the resistance now because now we know where you're at. But. Sure. So now that we've finished your fit and you've got your final position, this first screen here has all of your core data. And what we mean by the core data is your saddle height, your setback, your reach, and your drop. Um, obviously, Unless you're a math whiz, a lot of this doesn't really make any sense. What's great about the system is we can take that and we can have it come to life on a given bike. So we can take these numbers 
and apply it to any brand you can think of, Cannondale, GT, uh, your boo bike, whatever it is, we can take that data and have it come to life on, on any real bike out there. So when you talk about cyclocross, is there any variables in there when you look at things like bike handling, cornering, comfort on the bike? Like we said, like a lot of cross riders might ride their hoods a little up, not necessarily because it's better at power transfer, but because maybe they can corner more aggressively. Or um, So how much feedback do you get from the fitee what do you yep. call the person on the bike? Sure. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So what, what's great about the system is, uh, based on your final position, we'll know, uh, based on the numbers, which size is ultimately best. So typically what you'll find is, like in your case, if you use the Cannondale Super X as an example, you could probably ride a 56 or a 58. Based on the numbers, though, your position will tell us a number of things. It'll give us the stem length. It'll give us the spacer count for a given size. It'll also give us your seat post offset. Um, as the fitter, I know that a smaller bike will have a shorter wheelbase, be a little twitchier, a uh, little more racy, if you will. Bigger bike will have fewer spacers, shorter stem, slightly more stable. So this is where, based upon what you're trying to get out of your bike, if you're a first-time cross rider, might go for the bigger bike just because it's a little easier to get accustomed to. Mm -hmm. However, if you've been doing this for a while, if you know, hey, I like to run the smaller bike, we can make that happen as well. But what's great is there's no more guesswork. Based on the numbers of your position, our software calculates everything. And then just purely based on the data, the stem length, spacer count, you can weigh all those factors to ultimately pick the best size. What we can do now is build your perfect position, get you dialed in ahead of time. And no matter what bike you're getting um, from any manufacturer, we'll be able to dial you in, get you set for race day. And to your question about bar tilt, you know, as I said, with the novice riders, we're going to set this up as neutrally as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. But for someone like yourself who's been doing this for a while, we can make adjustments on the fit bike that you prefer so that when we dial in your position, you've got the, uh, the variables that you're most comfortable with. Feels good. Cool. All right, man. So, so you're all set. Hi, I'm Oberyn Arroy, and welcome back to BTB TV. So we got the fit upstairs, we have all these numbers. Now I go home, I got my bike here and I want to translate that over and I find just as a coach, uh, talking to clients, as someone myself even, you get all these numbers about saddle height and whatnot uh, and people don't really know how to translate that onto a bike. So tell me about, um, you know, we have those numbers, how do I now go about implementing that on my current ride? You bet. So as uh, Cold said, it's one of the biggest challenges anytime you do a fit, it doesn't matter if it's on the Guru Fit System or anything else, the big question is how do I take what happened during my fit session and get it 100% dialed in on the bike? So the good news for anyone who goes through a Guru Fit is you get a full fit report that contains all that data, but we do a number of things to make it even easier uh, or easier than ever before to take what happened during a fit session and have it come to life on the bike. So at the back of every fit report, you'll have a reference guide in case you forget all this, but essentially the first thing we're gonna do is if you look on the fit report, we've already got the stem length, the plus minus setting, and the spacer count loaded into the fit report. So the good news is you'll notice on the fit report we have what's called reach and drop. As soon as you set the front end to whatever configuration came out as a result of the fit, your reach and drop numbers take care of themselves. So it's one less variable that you have to worry about. Now, once you have the front end set, uh, saddle height is a pretty simple measurement. It's the classic center of the BB, to the top of the middle of the saddle, just like so. Um, and once you have your saddle height dialed, we're gonna do your setback, which according to our measurements is the nose to the center of the bottom bracket. Um, and we do equip our dealers with a laser guided tool that ensures that each one of these measurements is spot on 100%. If you're at home, what's a, great, what's a good way to measure that measurement. I mean, the center of the bottom, are you eyeballing it or do you use a spe sure. so special if, techniques? If, if you don't have... People at home, yeah, they probably don't have laser. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you, uh, you don't have a laser level at your disposal, you can break out a plumb bob and do it the old fashioned way. So essentially what you want to do is hang a weighted line, if you will, over the center of the bottom bracket and then you can take a tape measure and then hit each one of those measurements like setback and others. But um, if you do go to a guru authorized dealer, they do have a laser level, they can get you fully dialed in. Right. And then, and then, so like you said, if you have this, the uh, set up here and they'll get you all set in with the cockpit there. Um, but if you did want to take those measurements yourself when you're talking about drop or reach, what, what are the points that you're measuring to? You bet. So an important thing to, to factor in here, guys, is 
anytime you're making measurements on the bike, you have to do them in a set order because one measurement is predicated upon what happens to another. So no matter what you're doing, you want to do saddle height first, followed by setback before you do any reach and drop. Now, yeah. if you do want to see what your reach is, once you have your saddle height and setback dialed, you're going to go from the nose to the center of the middle of the bars. Um, and this is all accounted for in your fit report as well. But if you ever want to check your reach, that's the measurement. And then as far as drop, it's a little bit of math. It's the difference between the top of the saddle to the floor and then the middle of the bars to the floor. So essentially the drop, the way that we measure it, is the difference between those two numbers. It's a pretty, it's pretty simple math. Yeah, one would think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it. So you got the stuff set up. You got your bike. We're riding. We're racing faster now. We're more comfortable on the bike. So that's awesome, man. Thank you for joining us. If people want to get a fit with this system, I know this is brand spanking new. We're on one of the first machines, um, but where can people find out more information about this and ultimately get themselves a fit? Sure. So best place to go for everyone out there who's interested in getting a Guru fit is gurusports.net. Hit up our dealer locator. You'll find uh, the closest Guru retailer in your area. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. That is another episode of What's Good. Thank you to Colby. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll see you next time.